Well, hello and welcome back to Teal House Farm. Today we're talking composting and if you've been following us on Facebook or Instagram or TikTok or wherever you else you might follow us, you'll know that's been kind of the topic of discussion this week. And the reason for that is it's spring and in spring is usually when you have to start kind of thinking about restarting systems for the garden year. I feel like homesteading isn't January to December. I feel like it's like March to March. I don't know if you agree with me on that, but um, March is when things start picking up and you start making plans and then April everything's full force. So it's now April, which means everything has full force. And I just wanted to kind of show you our composting system um, because I try to keep it really simple. I don't have a lot of time and energy for complicated systems. I have a lot of children and I homeschool them and we have a lot of other things going on. And so there is a time in my life for those more complicated things, but I'm just about simple. Our main goal when it comes to our homestead is that we produce less waste and we work really hard on reducing what is going to the landfill and part of the way we do that is trying to be conscientious about the packaging we buy when we can afford to be conscientious and I'm sure you know what I mean by that. You can't always get it perfect but we do our best and um, we make a lot of stuff from scratch and we grow our own food and we raise some of our own animals and on and on and on but one other way we do that is by composting so our main goal of composting is not to produce stuff for the garden and you might be like well that's kind of silly like why don't you use your compost in your garden because we have chickens we have other large animals and we compost what we clean out of the stalls and i have so much of that material that i don't really need additional compost from our food scraps like i can't use it right now i mean i guess i could like give it to somebody that'd be really kind but to compost um for usability there's there's more rules you're more limited on what you can compost or if you don't want to be limited on what you can compost and you want to go ahead and compost that dairy and that uh like meat scraps and stuff then you have to be really careful about the temperature in your pile and things like that. And so I don't want to have to monitor anything. I want my pile to take care of itself. And so I compost basically all organic material that we have left over as scraps that we can't feed to the chickens because they won't eat it. And uh, I don't follow any of those rules because I'm just going to throw everything in there and therefore it may not be garden safe because I can't guarantee it's going to get hot enough because I'm not coming out here with a thermometer to measure it. So. Um, anyway, let me show you the setup and then I'm going to show you what we use to collect compost and just kind of how I do it and keep it really simple because maybe it will inspire you to get started because in the end, like I said, the goal is that this is scraps, these are scraps that are not going in my trash can to be wrapped in plastic. They're coming out here to biodegrade quicker, much more quicker, quickly than if they were in plastic. And they're not going to landfill, which overall reduces our plastic output because that's fewer garbage bags for us to send out to the landfill. Okay, she is not pretty, not the cat. The cat is very pretty. That is Jasmine, by the way. Everybody say hi to Jasmine. She has a twin brother whose name is Jasper and uh, they're a little harder to tell apart, but Jasmine's fatter. Sorry, Jasmine. Uh, anyway, this is the compost pile. It's two piles next to each other, if you can't tell. There's one that's surrounded in pellets. These are untreated pellets. And there is one that is surrounded in chicken wire. Are they 100% predator proof? Or I guess it's not predators because it's scavengers. No, it's not. But it's far enough from the house that I don't really care. And we cover them well enough that um, most animals don't really get in there and dig. Except this one sometimes, if she knows something really tasty has come out. Um, we've had to work a little bit on training her not to dig in the compost pile. Yeah, you're not even looking at me. You feel so guilty about it. So this is my old pile. I basically use a pile for about three years and then it gets really high, like up to there. And then I just stop using it. And then eventually it all breaks down and it gets real low. Look how low that is, okay? It's basically down to the base, which you can't really see because it's, oh, it's growing nature. Nature's doing what nature does. This is my newer pile that I've been using for about a year. Um, and it does press down as you use it. Um, so I still can fit a whole lot in there. And again, because I'm not using this for my garden, I don't care about closing it up and letting it do its thing. I'm just wanting to not put things in the trash can and give them back to the earth. One thing that might interest you, this first pile, I did a little experiment and I actually composted disposable diapers in there. I probably put about 300 in there. And before you freak out, I bought specialty bamboo, 100% bamboo diapers. They had no synthetic ingredients in them. And I did that at a time where we could afford something like that, which is no longer, but it was really cool because there used to be 
300 something diapers in there because I collected it over a two year period and we use disposables at night and uh, you can't tell, like those diapers are completely gone. Like the pile was up to here and now it's down to there. There's no diapers remaining. So it actually worked. Isn't that crazy? Like all those diapers did not go to the landfill. Actually, since it was over a two year period, it's probably way more than 300. If, if you just do, you know, one a night math, that's like 600. Um, so that's really cool. Those were diaper brand diapers and I'll link a video below. They do not recommend or endorse home composting of your diapers, but they do offer a self or a composting system where you can like send the dirty diapers back to them and they do it through municipal composting. Um, but I wanted to try it to see if it worked and I'm not using the compost in anything. And so I tried it and it worked. And that's really cool because diapers are, disposable diapers I think are the third largest item category that is sent to the landfill. It's an incredible amount of diapers. We're talking billions of diapers sitting in a landfill and they're plastic so who knows how long, hundreds upon hundreds of years to decompose. And look, in this, about three years, they're all done. For the last um, several years, I've used five gallon buckets to collect our compost, because if it's a big bucket, I don't have to bring it out as often. Um, but my kids keep using them as step stools and therefore they keep breaking the tops. And then it starts to smell by the time you realize that the top is broken because you don't have a good seal. And plus when they're full, they're really heavy and uh, kind of a pain to empty. So I've actually, we're gonna empty this one and then I'm gonna get rid of the bucket because it's all messed up anyway for my kids. And I have a small countertop bucket now. But just to show you, you don't need anything fancy to collect your scraps in. If you wanna take them out after every meal, just dump them out every meal. Or if you wanna collect and do a large amount at one time, you can use a big bucket. Anything with a lid on, if it's gonna sit more than just like a few minutes on your counter, you know, an ice cream bucket, a lard bucket, a shortening can with a lid, any of those things are fine. You just need a lid with a bucket. You don't need anything fancy. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna dump it in our compost pile. Now, normally I would wash this out before refilling it because um, it's really stinky, but I'm gonna throw it away because like I said, it's all messed up. So now we have a whole bunch of compost in there. Now you could just leave it like that if you really wanted to. It's gonna smell because it's decomposing without any sort of barrier. And that smell is probably going to attract um, animals. So if you're composting somewhere where you don't care if some, you know, um, possums come in and eat it or puppy dogs come in and try to eat it uh, then you don't really have to do anything it will uh, biodegrade just like that but if you want to eliminate smell if you want it to biodegrade faster and if you want to not attract rodents um, we need to cover because this is a large amount of material I don't cover I cover when it's a large amount so if you're taking it out several times during the day you probably would just cover your last time instead of doing this every single small increment um, but we're going to go ahead and cover this and I have a bunch of tree bark that fell off of a dead tree that I've collected. I'm going to throw that on top and then I have a bunch of like dead leaves and stuff that I've collected and I'm going to throw that on top to get it nice and buried so that the smell doesn't travel and to just, uh, which will discourage animals from digging. And that really is the long and the short of it. Uh, and when it comes to just wanting things to biodegrade on your property, um, I always encourage people to start somewhere, whatever they're doing, start somewhere. And if you're thinking about composting and you live somewhere where you could do something like this um, and not need to worry about special composting containers, because that's a whole another discussion, I just encourage you to get started. Like don't worry about the rules for garden safe composting your first year, maybe. Just start getting used to separating separating out your trash, having a compost bucket handy on your counter, getting that rhythm going of putting your scraps in there, putting them out, covering it. And then once that is like old hat to you, then you can really start getting into the rules and regulations of, hey, I want to produce compost that's safe for my garden, that biodegrades very quickly so I can use it the next year and things like that. And you will have that baseline set. So when you start watching videos of people 
talking about more complex the complexities of quick composting and what you can and can't or what situations that you can compost something you already have your baseline you're not starting from zero you're starting at you know 20 and so you're not trying to fill as much of a gap because you've already learned some things on your own anyway thanks so much for watching i hope you're all doing well and we will see you again very soon